All right, guys, welcome back to Hops and Choice Harleys. Um, we've been pumping videos out about once a week, but actually I haven't filmed any in, in oh, I don't know, three or four weeks. Uh, my video guy's been busy, I've been busy, things have been crazy. Before this video, on this 1965 I bought up in Colorado, it's uh, pretty damn close to bone stock bike. From what I'm finding, original paint, I've had some people question the rear fender, so the rear fender might have been changed. The oil bag's a little different. There's a few odds and ends, but she's really close. She was a lot higher elevation, so I'm having to play with the carburetor. I had to rebuild the carburetor and fix a bunch of fuel leaks, so we're working on that. I went ahead and put a Beyond 2000 electronic ignition in it. I'm just now getting ready to finish hooking that up. New battery, new uh, fluids. The bike's only got about 50 miles on the rebuild. Documented on a, a shop out of Denver, did the work on the motor. So really it's a sweet machine. After sitting for a year, we had oil that smelled like gas, gas that smelled like liquor. So I'm just draining the fluids, going through the carburetor, going through the timing, just going through all the little odds and ends before I get it out on the road. So we're gonna play around with that a little bit today. I did wanna give a shout out to all the people who are following and subscribing. I really appreciate it. Bikes. 
A lot of the shovels have it that way too. So I'm trying to just make sure that I've got the wire I want coming off of the power side of the junction box to the right side of my coil so that I can uh, run this EV on system. Kind of excited about it. Basically it's an electronic ignition system that uh, the gentleman's name is Ed who invented it. And it's an Evion 2000 because he invented it in 2000 for his knucklehead. Um, super guy, I've talked to him on the phone a couple times, he's really helpful. And basically what you're doing is you use your same distributor, uh, your stock distributor, and you're actually even using your stock uh, flyweights and cam. And then his thing, you pull your points assembly off and your condenser off, but you're actually even using the stock cam weights and distributor and cover so his his system tucks in underneath that really clean which is kind of neat man kind of cool stuff uh, yeah so this is my hot wire and uh but everything under here is really clean and well done so we're going to keep that to that side so basically this wire in my opinion was run upside down it should have been run to the bottom of the coil and it would run to the top not the end of the world but i am trying to get it right make sure we don't pinch any wires while we're doing this yeah i still just don't like that i can see me pinching this wire and that's the main hot wire that run the points or in this case the electronic ignition so i've got to make sure that i don't pinch the wire or have it anywhere where the wire is going to rub in the future. Okay guys, so we're still playing with some odds and ends here on the, the 65 pan head. I'm trying to hook up the wiring for the EVON 2000. It's a cool system, very cool system. So really all I'm doing is I'm bringing these uh, EVON wires from the EVON system and hooking them up to the coil over here. As per usual, I've got stuff scattered everywhere. In fact, I talked to my buddy Doc yesterday and he was asking about the uh, mousetrap because I got to do the mousetrap and the clutch adjustment because it, it's just horrible and the mousetrap arm is bent. He asked me how that was coming and I told him straight up I haven't even touched it. Because I got so much stuff torn apart, I want to get some of these things put back together before I move on to taking any more of the components apart. So, like I said, I've got had the carburetor off, the Throttle linkage for the cable was off, so I was only getting about a half throttle. Um, it was leaking like a sieve, so that wasn't good. I'm hoping I've got all that straightened out, but we'll see. I've got a bolt I or a nut I just dropped down in the very tight crevice. In fact, I think it's probably too tight to even get my magnet down in there, but we'll try. Nah, I can't get it with the magnet either. So where or where? is the right tool for fishing that out. It might just be that little flat screwdriver. If I can move it close enough with the screwdriver, then I can grab it with the magnet. All right, so we got the, the nut I dropped off, and we're gonna set that there so I don't lose it. And then, basically I'm using these uh, canvas wraps set up for all the wiring to match all the uh, the wiring that's on here. This bike's been rewired and the guy who did it did a nice job. He actually bought the real harness, all the canvas wrap wire with the correct ends on everything. So she's pretty. I'm just trying to keep her that way. Not to mention I want everything looking good but running good. And fortunately part of the issues we've been having with some of this stuff is just miswired. Uh, the horn wasn't wired at all. The neutral safety light switch is not wired. I don't care about the neutral safety light switch, but it's there, I should have it wired in. I don't know if you can see, it's over here, just black taped off. And I don't know, I haven't traced it to see. I know if I push this to the uh, accessory side of the ignition switch, it does light up the bulb like it's supposed to. So I'm kind of wondering if it's not hooked up at the transmission, the uh, little spring-loaded switch on the transmission. There we go. So we got that wire in there. Strip the end of this and get our new little end on there, which I just had. I don't know. I probably set it down and 
forgot where I said it. So yeah, as you guys are watching the videos, I do keep adding stuff to the walls. So, you know, if you guys see anything, let me know. I do get a lot of tire kickers. I spend hours listening to people him ho about what they want. And, you know, for every one part I sell, I probably have to go through, I kid you not, eight or 10 people that are just tire kickers or want to, you know, beat you up on price. It's amazing what social media has done. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's actually a blessing in a lot of ways because there's a lot of these parts that you'd never sell if it wasn't for social media. But the flip side of that is, you know, when you're going face to face, you don't treat people the way they do. You know, the tire kickers and the maybes and the, it's just amazing. I mean, my time is valuable. I wouldn't waste people's time the way people waste my time. But, you know, to each their own. It's no big deal. God has truly blessed me with a whole garage full of motorcycles and parts. And, you know, you sell some, you keep some, you lose out on some deals. It just is what it is. Okay, so we've got that. And now we got to do the same on this other one. Hopefully it's long enough to get to where I need it to go. 